Hello from the Transfer Pricing Group at Bennett Thrasher. My name is Jeff Childs, and we would like to welcome you to an introduction to transfer pricing. To get started, let's begin with a basic definition of transfer pricing. Transfer pricing refers to the practice of setting a price for the cross-border transfer of anything of value between two or more related entities. Is transfer pricing legal? This may seem like a strange question, but to listen to recent reports in the press concerning Google, Apple, and others, it's easy to get the impression that transfer pricing is a nefarious technique used by large corporations solely for the purpose of avoiding income taxes. The truth is that transfer pricing is not only legal, it's required by law in every developed country in the world, and tax authorities around the world allocate enormous resources towards transfer pricing enforcement. Why? Because tax authorities suspect that companies use transfer pricing to shift profits to low tax jurisdictions by failing to charge appropriate prices for intercompany transfers. In this example, if a U.S. parent company can price transactions such that most of the profit ends up in a Swiss subsidiary, it will achieve a reduction in its effective tax rate of 28%. The reduction in tax rate is permanent if U.S. Co. never repatriates Swiss profits. Currently, more than 70 countries have enacted transfer pricing laws to protect their tax bases. In response to the increase in global international trade and ballooning national budget deficits, many countries, including the U.S., have significantly expanded enforcement efforts in the past few years. So the simple objective of transfer pricing law is to require companies to compensate internal business units for property and services in the same way they would compensate an external or unrelated business unit. The standard used to measure the appropriateness of a charge is known as the arm's length standard. So how would unrelated parties price a given transaction? In most cases, it's difficult or impossible to find an identical transaction between unrelated parties. So transfer pricing rules generally require us to use the best available method to determine a price that will provide an arm's length result. The methods used to determine an arm's length result tend to be similar across jurisdictions, but application of the methods can vary significantly. We do not have time to discuss the methods in this presentation, but it's worth mentioning that the selection of the appropriate method is a critical step in transfer pricing analysis. Let's look at a simple example. Suppose that U.S. Co. has developed a product that is selling well in the U.S. The product is manufactured by an unrelated company in China, but U.S. Co. manages the production process by selecting materials, performing quality control, and managing the know-how involved in manufacturing. U.S. Co. wants to expand the distribution of the product into Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, so U.S. Co. creates a Swiss subsidiary that will be responsible for sales and marketing of the product in the EMEA region. Suppose that Swissco buys the product directly from the unrelated manufacturer for $50, the same price paid by U.S. Co., and receives certain support services at cost. At the end of year one, the Swiss sub has successfully expanded the market into Europe and in the process earned an EBIT margin of 20%. However, U.S. Co. earns an EBIT of 5% since it has additional expenses related to product management, R&D, marketing, administration, and infrastructure. Does this pricing arrangement satisfy the arm's length standard from a U.S. perspective? Before we answer that question, let's briefly discuss the transfer pricing penalties that can be enforced by the IRS in cases where an adjustment is made and the taxpayer does not have adequate supporting documentation in place at the time the tax return is filed. There are two penalty tiers. First, if a substantial valuation misstatement exists, a 20% penalty will be applied to the tax due. If a gross valuation misstatement exists, a 40% penalty will be applied to the tax due. The penalty is applied on either a transactional basis or on a net adjustment basis, whichever will result in the largest penalty. As a result, in the event the IRS determines that something of value was transferred and there was no price charged, a transactional penalty will be applied at the 40% rate. Many other countries have similar transfer pricing penalty laws. So back to the question. Will the pricing illustrated here satisfy the arm's length standard under U.S. transfer pricing laws? To answer this question, we must first examine the functions performed, the risks assumed, and assets employed by each party to the transaction, and determine the appropriate method to use to evaluate the arm's length nature of the economic result. Suppose we have determined that the comparable profits method, or CPM, is the best method for our analysis. 
Under the CPM, the profits of the least complex entity are compared to the profits of a pool of comparable companies to evaluate the arm's length result. So the first step in applying the CPM is to identify the least complex of the entities. In our simple example, it's clear that Swissco is the least complex of the entities. The next step in applying the CPM is to search for comparable companies that act in the same capacity as Swissco. Once comparable companies have been identified, adjustments are made to account for differences in risks assumed, assets employed, and geographic economic differences to arrive at an arm's length range of results. The analysis shows that comparable companies earn an adjusted three-year weighted average operating margin of between 5 and 8 percent. Swissco's operating margin is 20 percent far above the profits of comparable companies that act in a similar capacity and do not own any intangible property. By applying the CPM, U.S. Co.'s advisors determine that the prices charged do not meet the arm's length standard. So back to the functional analysis. A closer review of the functions performed and assets used shows that U.S. Co. performs a number of functions that benefit Swiss Co. and that U.S. Co. owns non-routine intangible property including manufacturing know-how and the trade name associated with the product. In an unrelated situation, U.S. Co. would not perform functions or transfer valuable assets without receiving adequate compensation. The current pricing structure does not include any charges for the IP and only limited charges for support services such as finance and accounting. There are several methods that can be used to determine an appropriate license fee to charge for the rights to sell U.S. Co.'s products. In this example, we will assume the comparable uncontrolled transaction or cut method is used and the arm's length royalty rate is determined to be between 8 and 12 percent. Next, the charge for strategic management, production management, and marketing support is evaluated. The cost of services plus method, or CSPM, is selected and another search for comparable companies is conducted. The analysis determines that a markup on costs of 7 percent will satisfy the arm's length standard. As a result of the analysis, the additional charges are made and Swissco's EBIT is now reduced to 5%, which falls within the arm's length range. It is important to note that if the adjustments were not made prior to filing a tax return, U.S. Co. would be subject to the 40% gross valuation misstatement penalty on additional taxes assessed. In our simple example, transfer pricing does not appear to be too complex or controversial. This can change quickly as the number of countries involved and the complexity of the transactions increases. While most countries follow the arm's length principle and employ similar methods, different countries are not always going to view the same transactions through the same set of eyes. This leads to risks of transfer pricing audits across multiple jurisdictions, transfer pricing adjustments, penalty assessments, double taxation, and lengthy and costly disputes. As discussed previously, adequate transfer pricing documentation is key to protecting against penalty assessments. In the U.S., taxpayers are required to have documentation in place at the time a tax return is filed and have 30 days to send documentation to the IRS after receiving an initial request. Having documentation in place is not a guarantee against an adjustment, but it provides protection from penalty assessment and is critical as a first line of defense. Documentation must include a company analysis where the business is explained in detail, including the corporate structure, an industry analysis to explain how recent industry developments affect the business and or the transfer price, a functional analysis which includes assets employed, risks assumed, and the functions performed in the transaction, and most importantly, an economic analysis. In this section, the best method is selected for benchmarking the transaction, along with a demonstration of how the pricing is arm's length. One of the ways the IRS identifies transfer pricing issues is through a new reporting requirement for uncertain tax positions that went into effect for tax years beginning in 2010. Schedule UTP requires disclosure in the tax return of any tax position for which a reserve has been created under FIN 48. If the company or its auditors have determined that a tax position has 50 percent or less chance of being sustained during an audit, a reserve for uncertain tax positions is created on the balance sheet. Schedule UTP requires a concise description of the position, a ranking of the position based on the size of the reserve, and an indication that it relates specifically to transfer pricing. Other sources of information used by the IRS to determine potential transfer pricing issues include Form 5471, which must be filed by U.S. shareholders of a controlled foreign corporation, and Form 5472, filed by U.S. companies that are owned by foreign shareholders. 
The IRS has significantly increased the resources directed at transfer pricing enforcement in the past two years. In addition to creating a director of transfer pricing and hiring 875 additional international tax examiners, transactions involving the movement of IP offshore have been designated as Tier 1 audit issues, which automatically mandate audit and examination. Tax authorities in many other countries have taken similar steps, and as a result, transfer pricing has become the most critical tax issue facing companies with cross-border transactions, according to a recent survey by Ernst & Young. In summary, the goal of a transfer pricing analysis should be to set prices for intercompany transactions that meet the arm's length standard while maximizing opportunities to achieve the lowest global effective tax rate and minimizing audit and adjustment risk. This process requires extensive research, analysis, and documentation and oftentimes deals with situations and transactions that are difficult to categorize. These many gray areas are what make transfer pricing a constantly evolving field for legislators, enforcers, and practitioners alike, and make the practice of setting transfer prices more of an art than a science. Again, my name is Jeff Childs with the Bennett Thrasher Transfer Pricing Group. Thanks for watching our presentation.